our, our local uh, mayor here in Detroit. You know, he's been he's had a couple of uh, presentations at like different venues. Like, for example, uh, there's a story about the Ossian Sweet case. I'm not sure if people are familiar with this, but uh, Ossian Sweet was a uh, physician here in the city of Detroit in uh, the 1920s, uh, native son of the city. Uh, went to college, came home, opened up a, uh, a practice here in the city of Detroit. And uh, Detroit was highly segregated, you know, during that era. And uh, he was doing well. And he thought that his residents and his community should reflect his standing and, you know, his, uh, his standing, right? Mm -hmm. And so he wanted to move in one of these so-called, you know, zoned areas where Black people weren't allowed to live. You know, they had these... Uh, deed restrictions and all these other, you know, rights, uh, fringing legislation that was on the, the, the books. So he found a, a white couple that sold him the house. And as soon as the ink was dry, man, the neighborhood started forming, you know, these armed mobs outside of his house protesting. And so mm -hmm. when he moved in, he made sure he brought his guns and he had friends and, and their families and they brought their guns. And so there are literally hundreds of armed people, you know, protesting outside of his residence, calling him everything but a son of God and telling him to move out of this house because it wasn't an area for black people to live. And so Dr. Ossian Sweet, you know, in response to someone firing into his residence while the police were there, the police were there. Mm. They didn't do anything. Of course not. He returned fire and a couple people were shot and I believe at least one person was killed. The police didn't arrest the people that initiated the conflict. They stormed into the sweet home and arrested all the people inside. And they put Dr. Sweet on trial. And of course, you know, eventually got to a point where uh, Clarence Darrell was uh, one of the leading uh, criminal defense attorneys of that era on the national stage. And believe it or not, the National Association for Colored People, the NAACP, hmm. actually helped sponsor it. Actually, the NAACP actually took on a gun rights case, self-defense case. As but you should. know what? It was a different era. But you know what? The NAACP of this era, I believe, would not take up such a case. But Unlikely, it just yeah. goes to show you that you should know your history and when people of a certain political bent or certain political organizations try to call organizations that you have affinities or ties to try to call their lineage into question, well, you need to look at their history and take them the task in response. So I say all that to say, man, history is your friend. And if someone tries to use history against you, read it for yourself and you'll find that, uh, you know what? there's it, it's it's ripe information for the taking that will be not only educational but it will shine light on some of the misdeeds of the anti-gunners of today mm. i love it i love it and that was thank you for telling that story because i had actually not heard that case before the ossian sweet case oh man yeah, it's it's, I, it's, I it's like uneducated it's see it's, 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 here's the moral of the story right at the end of the day an all-white jury exonerated Dr. Sweet of those mm -hmm. of those deaths, right? In 1920s, I forget the exact year. I should, I'm so embarrassed I forgot the year, but anyway. So as a direct consequence of that verdict with Dr. Sweet being exonerated of all charges, the state of Michigan enacted some changes to the Michigan Firearms Act. And it was the most draconian anti-gun firearm legislation that had ever existed in this state. And in many places, it was the most form of advanced gun control in the whole United States of America. You know, handgun registration. And I mean, it was it was just everything, man. And uh, yeah. it, 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 it score it underscores the point that gun control isn't about the guns, it's about race control. Yeah, wow. That um, That's a, 
I don't know if that, I don't even know that that's a bold statement. Like it feels bold, but I don't know that it's any more. No, bold it, than it's, it's else. factually accurate. Yeah. <laughs> we can tie the Michigan Firearms Act to a man, Dr. Sweet, defending his home against a racist mob who didn't want him in their community. Well, I mean, if we if we go back down the line, going to the very beginning of any sort of gun law in this country, oh, it is hereby illegal for uh, any Negro to own a firearm mm-hmm. because, oh, I, you know, at one point they could, I believe. And then they're like, no, nah, let's not do that. And don't call like, me. No, nah, it nah, might not be a good idea. We might want to put on, you know, roll yeah. some white sheets and terrorize his neighborhood and he right. might shoot us, right? Right. And then it's like, okay, so we go from <laughs> slave codes to black codes. Yeah. And, and then we have modern day gun control, which oftentimes especially when we speak of the 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 sweet case specifically designed because we need to make adjustments based on thing based on the losses that we've taken and then well it was designed to protect white races from endangering the lives of black people yeah that's 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 what that's essentially what gun control is and we have it codified in law you know Thanks to the constant effort of uh, gun rights organizations here locally in the state of Michigan and nationally, we've managed to chip away at some of those laws and get some of them stricken off the books. But as I mentioned earlier in this conversation, you know, we took some losses in this last election and uh, we're going to have a fight on our hands to keep these guys at bay, but uh, we're committed to fight them and, and we'll see how everything shakes out. But uh, yeah. I, I believe their their point of emphasis is going to be on red flag laws. 